What's going on folks? You're back with the uh, Bearded Gunsmith. Hopefully you can hear me over the air conditioner. I know it's kind of loud. Uh, we got a simple job today. I'm going to try to not make it too difficult for anybody that's never done this before. There's a couple ways to do it. And it is shortening shotgun barrel. And it's going to be to a legal length. This is almost somewhere, when it's finished, it'll be somewhere around 19 inches. Uh, can't even remember what the overall measurement is right now, but there's a few different ways to do it. And one is actually legit, but you take a hacksaw and get it almost to your length and then file it perpendicular with the rest of the barrel. And, uh, use a square to see when you get it to that point. But I'm going to be doing something a little bit different because I don't prefer that way. Uh, so we'll show you that. We'll still have to hacksaw it and then I'm going to put it on the lathe and I'll show you how we do that. And one of the ways we do that is with a plug that I made for the breech end. You can see that there. And I'll go into this and explain this a little bit more later. Precision fit right into there. So we'll go over that and I'll show you all that stuff. But for now, let me get set up in the vise to hacksaw the end off. All right, so now we're back, kind of set up at my vise. This is my first time, well, second video only, and first time trying to video one by myself, which is proving to be pretty difficult. But anyway, so my barrel here, if you guys can see best I can, you see right there by my long thumbnail, the mark that the customer made for me he wants to keep that rib so we're going to make literally a hacksaw cut up here that's going to leave us some room to machine and get everything squared off squared away where we need to be that way it won't look like some hillbilly did this job uh, it'll be nice and, and smooth cut and perpendicular and no irregularities no file marks, anything goofy like that. And then we'll dress the the rib when we're done, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so. And there we have it. Got this dude cut off. Obviously, the part that we don't need. And I left quite a bit there. So I got some room to machine up to that rib. You want to leave yourself some room for air, especially if you're messing with a uh, hacksaw.
And what I'm doing now, I'm just gonna take my chamfer tool. I'm gonna see why I did that. So, and I'm trying to keep the barrel in the picture, not so much as my face, but that's so what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take some calipers and get an inside diameter measurement of this, and then I'll show you what for. And it looks like I'm getting 720. So I'm gonna mark that number down in my head and keep that there. Then I'll get y'all set up again and show you what we're gonna do. Alright, so I'm back again. And what I've got here, might as well get it out of here. It's a piece of one inch by three foot aluminum bar stock. And what we're gonna have to do is make a fixture I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, the breech plug fixture I made. And this is so I can chuck this barrel up in the lathe to machine it. So I'll show you what I'm going to do to make the one for the muzzle end. Uh, should be very timely, but it's going to take me a little bit longer because I'm messing with this video. So here we're just going to cut off about a one and a half inch length section, then we'll go from there. And then, just like that, we got our aluminum slug that I need. And I know this is a little crooked. If you can do a better job with a hacksaw, you're a good man. I think it's a pain in the ass. But I'm going to face this off on the lathe anyhow. So get that set up, and then we'll be back. All right, back again. This is about the best camera angle I could get for not having a stand or a tripod or anything for my phone because that's what I'm using as my phone so what we're gonna do get this aluminum slug in here face this dude off I really don't care about that side you'll see why see why shortly I should say So 
Uh, hopefully we can manage to not drop my phone. So I'm trying to be easy. Easy with my my knobs here on my lathe. off nice. I had to get that little nub in the center because I don't have my tool height adjustment right but I'm not trying to mess with that right now. Then what we're going to do is turn this thing. If you remember my 0.720 diameter that I talked about. And it doesn't have to be spot on but it has to be close. You'll see why. And here's where I get safety glasses.
still not quite there yet. I still like to keep some measurements and checks to see what my diameter is. Take all fifty thousands, so that we should be at eight thirty. Eight thirty one, pretty damn close. This should take us to eight. Getting close to being done with this, why this doesn't have to be dead nuts. So let's see, we are 775. And I'd like to keep you guys there, but I'm going to have to move the phone so I can 
put the barrel up and measure it and see how close I'm getting. It'll bring you back. So, just did some checking. My 5000 server was spot on, which is good. That's what I'm looking for. And the prime example is that's what I need. You'll see why. I don't care about this face side. This has no bearing on what I'm doing. Uh, again, just hold tight and you'll see why. cuts to remove my chips and you really shouldn't grab for your chips like I did the first time when you got your lathe turning it's a real good way to get hurt I know it sounds stupid like you know some safety sally type shit but it really can mess you up <laughs> Spot on. So what I'm going to do, probably should have done this the reverse way, but flip this dude around. Let's see what I'm doing here. This one's going to be hard to record. So let me see what I can do with the camera. I'll be back. So I really can't set the camera up the way I want to, so you guys are going to have to deal with me holding the thing off and on for a few minutes.
We've got a nice center hole drill. And again, you will see why here in a minute. So I'll put this down and get set back up with my drill bit. So back with my drill bit. I'm going to drill number two hole. Well, number two drill bit. So number two hole. And uh, I'm not explaining anything really except what I'm doing, and you'll see why when it comes together at the end. Okay, so I'm back and I just went ahead and finished this thing because it was taking way too long to make uh, for something so simplistic trying to run this camera and balance everything and talk and do all that so you can see what this thing does when you tighten it in the barrel it will squeeze out yes I know my fingernails are long everybody always says that I don't know how people work without long fingernails I can't grab springs and small stuff anyhow It'll grab the inside of the barrel and give me something to put my center up against in the lathe, which is why I put that 60 degree pilot hole in that bolt. And so I will get this all set up and show you exactly what I'm doing. Then you'll you'll get the idea. So I will be right back yet again. And we are back. So I've got everything set up. So the plug I showed you the beginning of the video it's right here it fits tightly nicely into the breech and then the plug that we just made is right in there gives me something to hold on to so I can turn on my lathe turn my bell Let's see if I can get the camera set up at a good angle and show you what's going on there. Alright folks, this is the best I can do for camera angle until I get a tripod. So, you'll just have to deal with it. hope it's decent enough to get an idea of what's going on. cutting tool. That one's terrible. Getting in there. It's almost like a shoulder.
cutting it nice. That's definitely a good sign. Let's check and see how close I'm getting on that rib. Seems I got a long ways to go.
Let me see if I can show you exactly what I'm doing. Give me one second. Slight chamfer right there on the inside, the ID. And uh, debating on whether or not I'm going to round this. I'll leave it square. I'm going to probably round it and then put the front sight bead back on it. Uh, but that right there is why I like to use the lathe. And this normally probably would have been a half hour job. If I wasn't messing around with the camera from start to finish, but it's much better than hacksawing it and filing it and measuring it 900 times and then hoping you don't go past the rib that the guy wants to keep and just all that nightmare. Plus, it looks so much prettier, looks nice and professional. I'll probably put a little bit of cold blue on there you know, just to top it off, make it look better, make it blend in. But that right there give you a happy customer. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like and comment. <laughs> Always love reading comments. So, appreciate it. Thank you.